When I was four years old, my family took me on a vacation to Dharamshala. The rolling green hills, the lush vegetation and the palpable scent of clean air. I was in love. So much so that even when my mother kept nagging me for a picture, I didn't budge. From then and now, these green mountainous places feel unreal to me. And whenever I'm in them, I surrender. It's all a matter of perspective, really. I live in Delhi, our beautiful, bustling, polluted capital. Clean air feels like a privilege to me. No wonder being around nature blew my mind. Well, my mom eventually did get me to pose. Fast forward two years later, when everyone around me was talking about climate change and this impending doom we're headed towards, I wasn't stoked. My happy place could be taken from me at any moment. Now that more time has passed, this is no longer this distance problem that is the next generation's issue. This is it. This is our global crisis, and it's already impacted every region in the world, virtually deteriorating every aspect of our lives. Every day, climate scientists fight for their life, explaining the severity of climate change. All the signs are right there in front of us, and yet we refuse to heed to them. Climate change deniers have some very funny arguments, such as, the Earth's climate has always changed, and my favorite, just trust me. But, you know, credit where credit is due, there is something these deniers get right. The Earth's climate has indeed always changed. Climate change is defined as long-term shifts in temperature and weather patterns, and it's a natural phenomenon. In fact, if you look at the Earth's geological records, you'll see an ice age occur about every 100,000 years. However, what they get wrong about this is the timing. Since the last ice age, the Earth has warmed somewhere between 4 to 7 degrees, and this change took place over 5,000 years. However, the rate at which we're warming the Earth right now is 10 times the natural rate. And the cherry on top is if we continue down this path, the next century will see this change 20 times faster. But why is this a problem? The planet is hotter. We made ACs for a reason. Remember that time when Instagram was flooded with posts about the California wildfires? You know, hashtag thoughts and prayers. Well, what you might have missed during that time was the fact that the number of wildfires has tripled in recent years due to us putting more and more greenhouse gases into the environment. This happens because these warmer temperatures make the soil and vegetation drier in these areas, making them more flammable. It's not just wildfires. Natural disasters of all kinds have gotten worse due to climate change, such as droughts, floods and typhoons. Species globally are evolving to adapt to climate change. Scientists are already noticing changes in their genetics, morphology, and interactions in the, with the environment. For example, salamanders in North America are shrinking in size to better suit the warmer temperatures. Tiny salamanders. That's a cute image, right? Except not really. Imagine entire species altering in ways we cannot predict just unabated changes to ecosystems that will eventually result in their collapse. And this is not some danger theory I'm out here spewing, this is our reality. The kelp forests of South America have already collapsed and they're not replenishing because the adapted species favor warmer weathers. But how do we get from small salamanders to a full-blown global collapse? If human-caused climate change keeps changing the process of evolution, then we'll have disruptions in resources that we're heavily reliant on. Crops, livestock, fisheries, these are all systems that run on the ecological principles of the natural world and they're changing because of us. As we keep adding more and more emissions into the environment, our future keeps getting hazier. But why is this happening? When we think about the causes of climate change, we generally tend to pin it on advancements in technology, which is true for the most part. If you look at advancements in agriculture and technology, that led to the Industrial Revolution, which we all know wasn't good news for the environment. Then, if you look at advancements in transportation, that led to emissions caused by planes, automobiles, etc. I mean, who would have thought that coal-run trains would absolutely destroy the environment? But just because the technology is the enemy, I don't think that means that it can't be the savior. In order to avoid the most disastrous effects of climate change, we need to reach net zero emissions by the year of 2050, and 132 countries have already pledged to do so. 
every waking and sleeping moment we contribute to these emissions. For example, a simple Google search results in 0.2 grams of carbon straight into the environment. So think about that the next time you Google the worst stress Met Gala celebrities for the 10th time. So we need to cut emissions, but we also need to keep in mind that our energy demands are only going to keep increasing. The world population is expected to cross 11 billion by the year of 2100. When you look at this mammoth task, it's very natural to detach, to lose hope and not care. I mean, that's my reflex every time I look at my math syllabus. But here's why I think we can do it. Because humans are straight up geniuses even if our Met Gala fits are questionable at best. We have this ability to resist, this ability to invent that sets us apart. What we need are technological breakthroughs and advancements in clean tech. Not the end of technology, but a new beginning. Clean tech refers to technologies that help towards offsetting negative impacts towards the environment. This can be through increasing energy efficiency, using more sustainable resources or environmental protection activities. These clean tech technologies and breakthroughs will be required in five main sectors, manufacturing, electricity, transportation, agriculture, and buildings. These five sectors collectively account for almost all emissions caused by humans. And these technologies need to be scalable to fight an uphill battle. Looking at manufacturing, it's the single largest contributor to these emissions, accounting for a little over 30%. The production of one ton of cement causes around 0.7 tons of carbon emissions. In the year of 2020, 4.1 billion tons of cement were produced. If you look at the global population and do the math, this means 300 kgs of carbon were released per person for the production of cement alone. What we need to do is find more efficient ways to make the products we already know and love. And people are already doing this. A New York-based jewelry firm has found a way to make carbon-negative diamonds by taking emissions from the environment and converting them into these gems. On the other hand, traditional methods of diamond mining cause irreversible harm to the environment, impacting wildlife, soil quality, air quality, etc. Not only that, but exploration for these diamonds is usually done through electricity and hydrocarbons, which also causes more emissions. Realistically, it's impossible to create carbon neutral or negative waste for all the products you manufacture. But we don't have to. This is where carbon capture technologies come into play. What these technologies do, essentially, is capture carbon from the environment and, in essence, lock it away. It's similar to what trees do. Unfortunately, as great as trees are, we simply don't have enough land on the planet to plant enough trees to offset all our emissions. So what we need are basically more space efficient trees, such as direct air capture. Direct air capture is a technology that directly takes the carbon from the environment and stores it deep inside the earth. However, this technology is very expensive right now, which means that we need to innovate more in this sector. After manufacturing, the next largest contributor to our emissions is electricity. This is the sector we're in innovating very actively in. In the past 15 years, costs for solar and wind energy have been down 87 and 44 percent respectively. This is very impressive. Nuclear power has also been on the rise and the push for clean energy is now more than ever. However, we still need to invent more. As the global population continues to increase, so will energy demands. That means we need to innovate better ways to generate and store low carbon electricity while already employing the resources we do have, such as renewable sources of energy and nuclear power. The third largest contributor to emissions is agriculture. Meat and dairy farms all across the world produce a lot of methane. This basically means that cows need to get their guts checked. The production of 1 kg of beef results in almost 100 kgs of carbon emissions into the environment. Keeping in mind that our need for food is only going to keep increasing, lower consumption along with sustainable production techniques are very important in reaching that zero. The fourth largest contributor to emissions is transportation. This accounts for approximately 16% of all emissions. Over 90% of the fuel used in transportation in the US is petroleum based primarily gasoline and diesel. Now, even though electric vehicles are on the rise, we need to shift to cars that run on clearer, 
and lower carbon methods now. And all this time, we also need to look for fuels that can power bigger vehicles such as planes. An example of this is hydrogen fuel. This is the fuel with its only byproduct is water. And companies and countries all around the world are heavily investing in it, especially the European Union. Lastly, we have buildings. This is the fifth contributor to emissions, and it accounts for roughly 7%. They, buildings contribute to emissions in two ways. One is through the production of materials that are required to build them, such as cement, steel, iron, etc. And second is when we live in them. For example, when we use heating and air conditioning for our homes and offices. Estimates suggest that the number of buildings in the world will double by 2060, which means we need better and more sustainable practices. An example of this is low E windows. These windows make sure that the ultraviolet rays from the outside don't enter inside and when they do, this heat is retained. This in turn decreases the energy demands for each building. Climate change is the biggest challenge we have ever faced as a species, except maybe getting out of bed before 10 a.m. It requires the biggest push in innovation ever. Together, if we let our ability to invent with science and technology lead the way, there is hope in the future. This is not a moonshot. This is bigger than that. How we invent in the upcoming years will quite literally define the existence of our humankind, whether we survive or we perish. Look around us. We have built absolutely crazy things, and we have so much brilliance amongst all of us. Bill Gates said that it's our ability to invent that makes him hopeful about the future. I agree. Some of us are going to quite literally save the world we'll have our own group of little nerdy Avengers. And if it's not going to be you, then who will it be? You don't want to do it out of the goodness of your heart? Don't. I'm not asking you to. Do it for that young girl who might lose her happy place forever.